Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Gary Roger, just another fan TV. Back at another video. Like the content in this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content in this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe. If you like hearing about football, talk about the Baltimore Ravens, NFL in general, definitely hit that subscribe button, okay? Now, we know the 53-man roster is a tough, tough decision, but it has to be made. The Ravens got to make this final decision, these final cuts by 4 p.m. tomorrow. So today, we're going to go through the roster, and I think this is how the Ravens' uh, 53-man roster is going to shake out. I'm going to give my opinion on it. And uh, obviously, we can agree or disagree in the comments. I love the conversation that goes around it. So uh, I'm just going to start off and uh, give my prediction for what the Ravens 53-man roster is going to be uh, based on, you know, how the Ravens operate. That's how I think it will go. All right. Now, we'll start with the easy part. Special teams unit, three players, kicker, punter, long snapper, you know, Justin Tucker, Jordan Stout, Nick Moore. All right. No need to really talk about that. So let's get on to the quarterbacks. Uh, Lamar Jackson, uh, Tyler Huntley. So they carry two quarterbacks. That's been the Ravens' way for a little while now, so there's nothing really controversial about that. Now, running backs. Four running backs. J.K., Mike Davis, Tyler Beatty, Justice Hill. Just in case J.K. isn't fully, fully ready to go, all right, uh, I don't think he's going to get 70% of the snaps versus the Jets. You got Mike Davis, you got Tyler Beatty, and they, they value Justice Hill what he can do on special teams. So that's how I got that going. Now, Pat Ricard, one fullback, five wide receivers. All right, Bateman, Robinson, Prochet, DuVernay, all locked up. We're not worried about that. The fifth guy, Tylen Wallace, I feel pretty good about that selection. Um, they drafted him last year. You know, I, I would feel I, I feel pretty good about it, like I said, but I would feel even better if I was able to see progression in this offseason training camp period with Tylen Wallace. Didn't really get a chance to see that. Struggled a little bit, picked up an injury, but nevertheless – now, nonetheless, he's going to make the roster. So, uh, five wide receivers. Okay. Now, tight end. We got Mark Andrews, Nick Boyle, Isaiah Likely, Charlie Kohler. Now, you see next to Kohler's name, I have IR next day. What well, pretty much the Ravens are going to do is he's going to make the 53-man roster, and the Ravens are just going to put him on the IR immediately after that. Um, you know, he's recovering from that hernia surgery. That's how I would assume it will go for Charlie Kohler. Okay. Now, center. Tyler Linderbaum, Pat McCarry. Now, we know McCarry isn't just the center. He's the Ravens' sixth offensive lineman, so he's everywhere. But, you know, just classify him as a center because, you know, that's one of the places that we've seen him play a lot. All right. Offensive guard. Kevin Zeitler, Ben Powers, Ben Cleveland, Tyree Phillips. So, four guards carried on there. Zeitler and Powers, your, your starters. We can roll like that. Offensive tackle. Ronnie Stanley, he just got off the pup list. Um, he did not practice it today, um, which is a little strange. But Harbaugh said he might practice tomorrow. So we hope for that for Ronnie Stanley. But obviously he's going to 53. So Stanley, Jawan James, Daniel Falele, Morgan Moses. Um, hopefully week one, the starters are Stanley and Morgan Moses. Okay. Now we flip over to the defensive side of the ball. Uh, two nose tackles. Um, Travis Jones, Michael Pierce. That's how I think that's going to roll. That's pretty simple right there. Uh, defensive ends, interior defensive linemen, however you want to call it. You know, the Ravens play 3 4, so it's classified a little differently. Uh, but Calais Campbell, Justice Matabike, uh, Broderick Washington. All right. Uh, outside linebacker, Justin Houston, Odafe Owe, Dalen Hayes, David Ojabo. Now, Ojabo is going to be similar to Kolar. He's going to make the 53 man roster, go to IR the very next day, uh, get a Ravens a chance to bring somebody back. Apparently, the Ravens had some type of. Uh, paperwork issue with, with Ojabo, where like when they signed him, they were supposed to put him on the IR or, or the NFL list for, you know, uh, non-football injury because it didn't happen on the NFL field. They missed a chance to do that because you're supposed to do that like 24 hours after you signed the guy. The Ravens didn't do that. So since they didn't, they have to put him on. Uh, they have, He has to make the 53, then go straight to the uh, IR list after that. It's kind of a weird rule. I'll put the tweet up there from Jeff Cerebic. Um, he, he explained it a little better than I can. All right. Um, inside linebackers. Now, Patrick Queen, Josh Bynes, uh, Josh Ross, and Malik Harrison. Now, Josh Ross, obviously undrafted guy. He's the one that's going to make the roster. Ravens always have an undrafted guy who makes the roster. This year's Josh Ross. He's been nothing short of impressive. Every preseason game throughout training camp, uh, he flies around the ball. It helps that he already knows the system coming from Michigan where Mike McDonald came from. But uh, he still got to put that work out there on the field. And he's done that, so. He makes the team for me. Now, secondary is where it gets interesting. Where it gets interesting, honestly. I got seven corners. 
Um, Humphrey, Peters, Kyle Fuller, the two rookies, Pepe Williams, Jalen Armour Davis. Jalen Armour Davis actually returned to practice today, so that's good. He's been out for maybe like a week and a half with a head injury, so he actually returned to practice today, so that's good. Uh, Brandon Stevens and Ardarius Washington. Now, Ardarius Washington, you could classify him as a safety. Um, he plays nickel back safety. He can do a multitude of things. I just put him in this corner class right here. Uh, but he got a really slow start to the training camp because he was on that pup list. And from the time he got activated off the pup list to now, he's done nothing but skyrocketing and go up. He's been great in every preseason game. He's been good in practice. Um, I had a hard time really cutting out Darius Washington. I had a hard time doing it. All right, now, that safety room. Uh, free safeties, two of those, Marcus Williams, Geno Stone. Geno Stone makes it because, of, obviously, his special team ability is important, and we don't really value that. But also, I think he's the only other true free safety on this roster. I mentioned it before. Putting Kyle Hamilton to saying that, okay, if Marcus Williams go down, Kyle Hamilton is your free safety. I don't think that's the best way to use Kyle Hamilton, uh, in my opinion. He could do a multitude of things, but just saying, hey, play deep free safety, that's it. I don't think that gets the most out of what he can do. Okay. Now, strong safety, Chuck Clark, and the aforementioned uh, Kyle Hamilton, right? That's 53 people right there. Now, where it's 53 people, but it's technically 51 because Kolar and Ojabo are both going to go IR next day. All right. So the Ravens players, I think, was going to be brought back after that. I think they bring back Tony Jefferson, and I, bring, I think they bring back Stephen Means. Now, Steven Means, outside linebacker, with Ojabo on IR, they only have three healthy outside linebackers. I think they really need to sign somebody else as well. But Steven Means has already been in the building, so it just makes too much sense to – it makes too much sense not to bring him back. Like, you have to bring him back. You get four outside linebackers now. Steven Means has had a good preseason as well. So, I felt good there. Tony Jefferson, um, a leader in the locker room, and I think that – he plays that strong safety position. He can play that dime linebacker when Chuck needs a breather or Kyle Hamilton is playing somewhere else. Tony Jefferson can come in and do those kind of things. Um, I know carrying this many DBs is a lot, but if the Ravens learned anything from last season is that you got to be prepared, especially on the back end. They had a lot of injuries to that secondary, and they suffered because of it. I just can't. Just, just because, also, they have those two guys going straight to IR, um, at least for the first couple weeks of the season with Kolar and Ojabo. It gives them the flexibility to bring a guy like Tony Jefferson back. And I don't think they'll pass up on that opportunity. I really don't. Uh, Publix, we know two guys that were expecting to come back at some point this year. Tyus Bowser, Gus Edwards. We're going to talk about that. Um, I did want to talk about some guys that was kind of tough letting go. Brent Urban. I saw you, you saw only had three interior defensive linemen. Uh, I'm, that was my toughest decision, honestly, because I don't know if the Ravens are going to do that. That seems a little thin. But to fit the 53 how I had it, that's that's what guy who had to let go was Brent Urban. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. He might make the 53. I could be very wrong about that one. So we'll see about that. Uh, Christian Welch had a spectacular game versus the Commanders. And he's a valuable special teams player. As we mentioned before, Hallball likes that. Uh, he's been here for a couple years. Um, you know, it was looking like a stone cold lock for Josh Watt to make the roster. I still think it is. But he showed in that Commanders game that he can play. So, you know, good for Christian Welch. Uh, sad, you know, I, I you know, I had to cut him on this. Uh, Benjamin Victor, uh, I really like what he can do is going up, getting the ball. He's been here for a couple of years, kind of like Christian Welch. Uh, just hasn't really ever made the 53-man roster. I don't think that changes, but he had a good preseason in my eyes. Every time he's got an opportunity to play, he's been pretty decent. So that was kind of a little bit of a tough cut, but I don't see how Benjamin Victor makes this roster. Maybe he'll stick and land somewhere else. All right, lastly, wrapping up this video. I want to do some, some practice squad hope with some guys that I hope the Ravens can keep, but I don't know if they'll be able to. Uh, QB, Anthony Brown, I thought he was he got his uh, preseason just went up and up and up. Like every game he elevated to a new level. So hopefully they can keep him. I don't know if they will. If they put him on that practice squad, he's probably gone. Jamar Bridges, Makai Polk, two guys that really started off the preseason hot, kind of tailed off towards the end, the last two games in particular. Um... But they're two guys that I would love to see if the Ravens could keep around. But I don't know if they'll be able to. Now, two defensive guys. Isaiah Mack, Sakobi McClain. Uh, Isaiah Mack, defensive tackle. He really popped off the screen, especially in that Arizona game. 
And he's been solid throughout camp. If they can find a way to keep Isaiah Mack, I think that would be a really good stash on the practice squad kind of guy. Big, physical, disruptive. I like what I saw from Isaiah Mack. And lastly is a Kobe McLean. He was a tough cut a little bit just because he's a talented inside linebacker. Another undrafted guy like Josh Ross. But Josh Ross would just happen to propel ahead of him. But that's not to say that Kobe McLean didn't have good practices, good games. This last game, he had a really good game versus the Commanders. In practice, he's caught a couple of interceptions before. So he's been a good player. So if they can stash a guy like him on the practice squad, I think that would be a good move, okay? Um, so, look, that's my Ravens 53-man uh, roster prediction. Let me know what you guys agree with, disagree with in the comment section. I got some guys in here, like I said, that was tough cuts. Some guys that I hope the Ravens can get on that practice squad. Let me know what some guys you're hoping the Ravens to be able to stash on that practice squad as well. Maybe they'll get some action during the season if injuries occur. Uh, but that's it for this roster prediction, man. It's your boy Gabe with Just Another Fan TV. I'm out.